Good morning, St. Saviour. Today's reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 1 to 8. Joshua to succeed Moses. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord God himself will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will also cross ahead of you, as the Lord said, and the Lord will do to them what he did to Sion and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded of you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous. For you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Rebecca, very much for that reading. It's a great reading, a great few verses. Well, good morning and welcome. It's lovely to see you this morning. And Happy New Year, if I haven't said Good New Year to you yet. My name is Alan. I'm part of the team here. It's lovely to see you, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching this online. I'm not sure how to introduce myself this morning. I thought... Geraint was going to say that I'm not just any old failure, I'm a successful failure. But he was um, speaking a bit earlier on that the books I've been reading, but um, it's lovely to have you. And um, New Year is all about joy and enthusiasm and hope and expectation over the next year. And I don't know what hopes or joys you have, whether you've already made some New Year's resolutions. The problem is that we start with hope and enthusiasm, don't we? Then as the year goes on, things happen and we start to lose our hope and enthusiasm. I can remember in 2020, everyone saying to me, at the end of 2020, can't wait for 2021, it's going to be a better year. At the end of 21, everyone said, can't wait for 2022, it's going to be a better year. At the end of 2022, people said, can't wait for 23. And then this December, everyone was saying, I'm sure next year is going to be a better year. So we start well, and as we go through the year, problems and things happen that take away our hope and enthusiasm. So how do we keep that hope and enthusiasm not just for one month, but for the whole year. But during the last few years, there's been four things that have really encouraged me and sustained me in my own faith and my own walk with God. And I'm going to be sharing those things with you over the next four weeks. That's what we're going to be looking at. So before we continue, shall we pray? Father, we thank you that we can gather in your name this morning. We thank you for your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us by your Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we're looking at one of the great promises in the Bible, that God is with you. And hopefully when you came in this morning, you got this little gift, free pen. You need to have good eyesight to read the scripture. But it says on the pen, he will never leave you, he will not forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. And I want to just briefly look at what it means to have God with you, God's presence with you. And I want to look at God's presence through three different, very, ang very different angles, three different ways of how we can look at God's presence in our lives. So the first thing is this. God's presence is with you. Can we got a slide? First slide up. Next one, please. God's presence is with you. I don't know if any of you got this on your phone, location services. The context of this passage that Rebecca read to us is Moses is 120 years old and he's now passing on the baton to Joshua. And God has been faithful to Israel. 
Despite their disobedience, he still protected them and fed them and led them and guided them. And it says this in verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why does God say this to Joshua? Why does he say, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged? Because God knows that the path ahead isn't going to be easy. God wants to tell them there's going to be times where it's going to be tough and painful. But in all of this, he says, I'm still going to be with you. Over the next 12 months, there might be times for each of our lives which are going to be tough and painful and challenging. And God says the same words to each one of us this morning. I am with you. I can't believe I have two children who are both in high school at the moment. Time flies, doesn't it? When my um, kids start in high school, I bought them both mobile phones and I put apps on their phones with um, locations, apps, so I know where they are and I know they're okay and I know when they get to school. And it gives a little ping. It says the boys have arrived at school and it gives a little ping when they come home. It says the boys have arrived home. When my oldest first started high school, for some reason, it was taking them a long time to get home. Yeah, and it's only a um, 10 minute journey, 10, 15 minutes. An hour would go, an hour, half would go, and then you turn up. This was happening every night. So I thought, well, what's going on? It doesn't take that long to walk home. He hasn't got any detentions, any clubs. So I check on the location app, and it was turned off. It says, can't find his location. Oh, that's strange. Unbeknown to him, he didn't have one location app, not two, but I put three on his phone. So he was turning his location app off when he was coming out of school, thinking he could go on some adventure. <laughs> but I could see exactly where he was going. He was going into some fields, feeding horses. He was going down the park. He was jumping on buses. He was getting up to things he didn't want, shouldn't be doing. And then he turned his location app back on, and he'd sort of come home. An hour and a half had passed. And I said, I know where you've been. I know wherever you're going, Daddy is with you. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> I can see exactly what you're up to and where you're going. Daddy is always with him. But do you know that you have an app that you can download right now? So your heavenly daddy is with you all the time. And it's called the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, your heavenly daddy is with you. And it's a promise that's repeated again and again in the Bible. Jesus says himself, he says, I am with you right until the end of the age. There's nowhere you can go where God isn't with you. Whatever you face, you face with God. You may find yourself right in the heart of a storm this morning, but you are never in that storm on your own. I think one of my biggest revelations over the last few years is when we're in that place of challenge and storms and pain, it's not just like God's trying to bring some sort of profound lesson out of it. It's not that God's got a master plan and we go for that and God's plan's still going to happen at the end of it. It's this simple truth that God stands with you. He stands with you. If you're facing something this morning and you feel alone, please don't think you're alone. God is with you. When you weep, he weeps with you. When you shout for joy, God shouts for joy with you. And if you're struggling with relationships or parenting, whatever you might be facing, you face it with God. You're never alone not just about some big cosmic plan that's going on. God is right there with you, right in the midst. That's his promise. God's presence is with you. That's the first thing. Hold on to that throughout this year, on the mountaintops, but also in the valleys, that God is with you wherever you go. Then the second thing is this. Next slide, please. God's presence is in you. He's not just with you wherever you go, but his presence is in you. First Corinthians chapter 6 says this. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? And the Bible speaks about God not only with us, but he lives in our hearts by the Spirit. And it says that we're temples of the Spirit. It's not just that we have the power of God with us, but we have God himself in our hearts. Jesus goes to the Father, he ascends, and he says, when I ascend, I will send another, the Comforter, to be with you. So that everyone who believes in Jesus carries the presence of God with them wherever they go. If you struggle to get your head around this, then good. You know, how can we get our head around this? It should be mind-blowing. We should be totally confused and 
struggling to comprehend what this means. What this is saying is the same God that puts the stars in the sky, that created the galaxies and the universe, that numbers all the stars one by one, the same God that breathes life into every living being, is the same God that we carry in our hearts today. You get to change the atmosphere wherever you go, because wherever you go, you carry the presence of God with you. A few years ago, I was at a leadership conference, and there was someone who was speaking who works in Parliament. And she was saying how she gets into Parliament early, and she goes around all the seats, and she prays over all the seats, prays over the, the meeting rooms, and pray that they would experience the peace and the blessing of the Lord. And she said, over a period of time, I saw something change, saw something shift, as I changed the atmosphere of that environment. When I heard that, I thought, that's such a good thing to do. And I used to work for London Transport, and I used to get into the habit of getting onto my train early and walking through the train, praying over every seat, praying that whoever comes onto that carriage would be blessed and would experience the peace of the Lord. And I don't know if it was a coincidence or a God incident, but I used to hear on the radio all the time, the train in front would have issues. There'd be someone having a fight or someone being sick or behind me. There'd be a suspect package or there'd be people who were drunk and were fighting and being abusive. But all the years I worked on it, I never had one problem on my train. And I believe it was down to just praying, asking God's atmosphere and his presence to come wherever I was, that he would bring something of his peace into that place, into that space when I was there. I started to do that in my church. In my previous church, we used to have pews. I used to go in on Saturday night and pray over all the pews, pray that there'd just be peace and God's blessing would come. Um, we don't have pews here, so I have to wait till the chairs are put out. We have an amazing team who puts chairs up here. But after the chairs put out, I quite often just walk up and down, just praying over the chairs where you're sitting today. And you've been prayed for. I've been praying for God's blessings and God's peace in this place. It's changing the atmosphere of this room. Could you do that? Could you pray to change the atmosphere of where you go this week? What would it look like for you to change the atmosphere this week of your office? or the queue you're in when you're in the supermarket, or in the bus that you're riding? What would it look like for you to pray that lives would be changed? God is not just with you, but we carry his presence in us, and we get to change the atmosphere of wherever we go. Praying that God would come, he would bring his peace and his blessing. Could you do that this week? God's presence is with you, God's presence is in you, and finally, God's presence is all around you. Final slide, please. In the Psalms, we're told there's nowhere we can go without God's presence. His presence is everywhere. He's omnipresent. So if his presence is everywhere in every living being and creature, why does Jesus say in the Gospels, where two or three meet together, there I am amongst you? If God is everywhere, why is Jesus saying, where two or three are together, that's where I am? Because when we gather together in praise and worship and prayer, there's kind of a unique manifestation of God's presence that happens in that place and in that space. Second Chronicles tells this wonderful scene where Solomon has just finished the temple and they bring the Ark of the Covenant into the temple and then they have this little worship service and everyone's worshiping, praising the Lord and then it says this, Second Chronicles chapter 5. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. Wouldn't that be amazing if that happened today? God's glory came out. We couldn't finish the service because of his glory and his presence and his holiness. It just came down in such a unique and special and powerful way. When we gather together in worship and praise, there's a specific encounter of the presence of God. We can worship online and sometimes we have to because of our circumstances, but it's not the replacement of us gathering together in God's presence. It's why we hear testimonies when people return from conferences. God is everywhere, but when people gather and they're worshiping and they're lifting their hands and praising, there's this particular unique expression of God's presence that comes in response to us gathering together and praising. We used to go to a conference in the Midlands when I was living in the Midlands and it was amazing that people weren't even praying for, for healing. But as they praised God and they worshipped, there was thousands gathered, we'd hear testimony after testimony of people being said, I've been healed, 
healed from an illness or a sickness or something shifted or something's been removed and that's just gathering together in this unique space, this thin space. That's why we've been went away in the summer. We heard his testimonies. We heard it last year and we heard it the year before. Thousands of us gathering in the big top, praising and praying. And yet something unique was happening and people were saying they were being healed and they were being changed. And we had seen people who were part of our church that said, during that service, I was healed. And while we were all worshipping and praising in the big top, in our youth venue, the youth were gathering, and they were encountering the Holy Spirit in a unique and powerful way. And we've seen something shift in the lives of our young people. That actually, when they come into church now, they, they don't aggravate parents saying, when can we leave, when we can leave church? It's the parents which are dragging the young people away. Something's changed, something's shifted. For many of those young people, they encountered the Holy Spirit in a very tangible and experiential way for the first time when they gathered that summer. That's why we're trying to make space and pause in our services to actually say, Lord, this isn't about us. It's not just about whoever's speaking and leading and who's playing the guitar. It's about you, and we're here by faith for you to come and speak to us and encounter us and minister to us. That's why we have the six, this time of informal worship and informal service, for us just to be real in God's space and for God to come and minister to our hearts. So here's how I think all this works with the presence. As we come together and we gather and we worship and we praise and we pray, we begin to encounter God in a very special and unique way. And as we do that, then he fills us by his spirit and we begin to feel and receive his presence within our hearts. And then we go out of those doors at the back. We go to those doors into the world, carrying the presence of God into every battle, every, into every situation, every joy, every disappointment and every challenge. But it's a choice. It starts with us. If the band would just like to come up. When I share my location on my phone with my son, it comes up as Daddy is sharing his location with you. But he has a choice. He has a choice whether he wants to respond to that and say, I'm willing to share my location back with Dad. And if he doesn't, there's no connection. And I don't want to share my location with him and him with me just so I, I can check up on him to make sure he's not going through some random field and feeding horses. I do it because I want to be with him. I want to protect him. I want to, him to know that if he, whatever he goes through, whatever he is, whatever situation he's in, I'm at the end of the phone, a text message or a phone call, that he knows I'm always with him. And God wants to connect with us. It's not sharing our location. God wants to share his heart. And our choice, our response is to share our heart back with God. Not because he wants to check up on us and keep an eye on us, but because he wants to connect us. He wants us to know that he's always with us, that wherever we go, we carry the presence of God with us. And that's the choice. That's what is on offer for each of us for this new year. Whether we're going to draw a line and say, that was last year. This year is a new year. We start afresh. We're going to pause. We're going to make time in our diaries each day to encounter the presence of God, to share our heart with him as he shares his heart with us. He shared his heart with us through Jesus on the cross. We know that God loves us and he's for us. But he's saying to us, amongst all the busyness, all the demands, all the stress, all the challenges, will you be still? And will you share your heart? If you're able, would you like to stand? We're going to make some space in a moment just so we can just pause. Um, but we're going to have communion first and share communion together. And then we're going to have a time of ministry after where we can all of us just offer our hearts to the Lord again this new year.